Hi everyone, so let's continue explaining the computer motherboard component. So basically this is the part two, okay? So we have seen the last component that we have seen is the MOSFET. Okay, this is basically SMD MOSFET. As I told you before, the MOSFET has, as you can see, the drain over here, four pin for drain, the source, three pin for source, and the gate. Here we have the gate. So basically, the gate is the pin that receives the controller signal in order to make the MOSFET in an active state. Okay, basically, we called it MOSFET or switch or voltage regulator. Okay, so in every circuit in the mother motherboard, you should find two MOSFETs or more. Okay, so let's see the next component. So we have SMD transistor. Basically, this is a three pin component. As you can see here, we have base, collector and emitter. Okay, so for the transistor, the base is exactly like the gate for the MOSFET. Okay, so when the base receives a control signal, the voltage or the current will pass from collector to emitter or from emitter to collector depending in the type of the transistor is it pnp transistor or npn transistor so let's see the next component so here we have smd led so remember please that smd means surface mounted device and the opposite of the smd is THT or true whole technology device. So basically the LD is just a diode. As you can see, we have here the symbol for the LED. Here we have the diode and with two arrows. Okay, so the LED, as you can see, you can test it using the multimeter, of course, using the same working principle as testing normal diode. Always you should put the read probe of the multimeter here in the anode or in the positive terminal and the black probe in the cathode or in the negative terminal. And if you get a short or a very low resistance, means the diode is bad. I mean, not very low resistance, but a very low drop voltage. Okay. Basically, you should get about 200, 300, 400, 700 drop voltage. So let's see the next component. Then we have regulators, as you can see here. So basically, if you see this kind of component in every motherboard, this is THT component, okay? Here we have pins, as you can see. So this is THT, not ACM2 component. You can find, of course, this kind of component in the computer motherboard, not in the laptop motherboard, okay? And of course, in power electronics motherboard, like, for example, like for television, etc. So to, to know about this component, you should, of course, use its reference. As you can see here, we have reference. And then you can know whether this component is regulator, voltage regulator, or transistor, or diode, etc. Because sometimes you can find a diode with three terminals, okay? So always for voltage regulator, we have the input and the output voltage, and of course we have the ground. So for example, it takes 12 volt and get here 5 volt. Okay, so this is for voltage regulators, and I will show you in the next lectures and next videos how to use this reference and how to look for the data sheet of any component you have. Okay, so let's see the next component. So then we have the network resistor, okay? The network resistor, the same working principle as normal resist resistor, but this network resistor basically gathered many resistors inside it. For example, for this one, here it, it combined three resistors, as you can see. Here we have schematic. Basically, the schematic is a network resistor with four resistors inside it. Why exactly we use this kind of component? So we use this kind of component in order to gain space, okay? Because the motherboard is not a very big motherboard. <coughs> 
So in order to gain the space, you can use a network resistor rather than use, for example, four resistors. And of course, you need you will need a very uh, space. Okay. So let's see the next component. So then here we have the current sense resistor. This is basically a very important component that you can find, of course, in every computer motherboard. So this component has as a purpose to control the current. Okay. So basically here we have the symbol for current sense resistor. Okay. So if you check using the multimeter this current sense resistors you will get a very low resistance and of course a short if you use a multimeter in the mode of buzzer but it's not that not mean that this resistor is failed no this resistor basically is designed to get you a very low resistance and of course it control the current in the circuit okay so let's see the next component then we have fuse resistor as you can see we have fuse resistors you can find this one for example this is basically resistors but we call it sometimes fuse resistors why because we have here zero okay zero ohms means a very low resistance you can find zero like this or even three zeros the same thing and of course we have here two symbols for resistors you can find this one and this one Basically, this is a UA symbol and this is the universal symbol. This one is the universal symbol. Okay, so let's see the next component. Then we have the thermistor resistor. Okay, the thermistor resistor. So please pay attention because in laptop motherboards, you can find this compound like those, like ceramic capacitors with many shapes and colors. So pay attention because, for example, you can find this one. This is basically a thermistor resistor, but this one also could be a ceramic capacitor just using the colors. So by experience, you can you can be able to identify to identify the components okay and of course uh, we have you can find also other components like this are inductor or coin okay so let's see the next component again so then we have the light dependent resistor as you can see we have the photo resistor okay this is the photo resistor so here in each symbol it's a little bit different from led okay because the led emits the light and the, the photo resistance it sends the light it is a sensor of light as you can see the arrows here for photo resistors are in this side okay so let's see again the next component and let's discuss it so we have the diode or the short key diode Okay. So basically, in every motherboard, you can find many types of diode. You can find diode like this one. So basically, this and this, these two diodes are THT diodes or true whole technology diodes because we have here terminals, as you can see. And these two are ACMD diodes, as you can see. Okay, so here we have a, a diode. This is basically a short key diode. So what is the difference between a normal diode and a short key? diode basically a short key diode we find it in the output of every power stage or power circuit why because it adjusts the current in the in the output stage okay and of course never replace a normal diode with a short key diode because the short key diode is a fast a fast diode okay and of course as i told you before here you can find also compound like this one it's exactly like a transistor or voltage regulator with three terminals but it's a diode it's a short key diode not a transistor okay so next let's, let's see the next component we have here the tvs diode you can find also 
this kind of diode that we call it TVS diode. Basically, we have this symbol here for TVS diode, two diodes connected with their cathodes. Okay. So let's see the next component. We have crystal oscillator. Okay. So basically, crystal oscillator, you can find many, many kind of crystal oscillator this is for example two examples and here we have the symbol so what is the meaning of crystal oscillators basically the crystal oscillators without it of course in the motherboard without the crystal oscillator for, of course and the clock generator for example in the laptop motherboard or every computer motherboard you can find the clock generator next the crystal oscillator without these two components the motherboard cannot work neither why because does the clock generator and the crystal oscillator gives the control or the clock the timing to synchronize all components in the motherboard so without it nothing will be happen so let's see another component the next component we have eight pin MOSFET as we we have seen before. Basically, we have we have seen already eight pin MOSFET here. We have a right schematic here, for example. For drain, always we have four pins, and for source we have two pins, and for gate we have the one pin. Always the pin number one, two, three are for source. The pin number four are for drain, and the other pins five, six, seven, eight are for drain. Here we have the MOSFET, so that's it for the part number two. We're gonna see tomorrow in the or today, maybe today, in the next video, the part three. And please don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and share the video. And for anyone who wants to join me in the Patreon page, you are very welcome. There in my Patreon page, I share in a daily basis laptop schematics. Uh, a lot of tips and tricks and secrets about how to repair efficiently uh, laptop motherboards and computer motherboards. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.